It's uh, a great privilege and pleasure to introduce Dr. Brent Ritchie. And uh, Dr. Ritchie has flown here from Calgary to be with us just for the day. Uh, quite a commitment. Just Dr. Ritchie holds a professorship in tourism management at Haskine School of Business in Calgary. He serves as chair of the World Tourism Education Research Centre. He's a graduate of Queen's, twice over, hooray. His ongoing research interests include the study of travel destination images, tourism policy, planning and development, managing quality service in tourism, enhancing productivity and uh, competitiveness in the tourism industry. His research focuses on destination vision management and the development of indices of competitiveness, sustainability, and progress. As we move into a focus on tourism in rural areas and community com competitiveness, please join me in welcoming Dr. Brent Ritchie. Thanks so much, Sean. Well, it really is a pleasure to be back home. I grew up in Ottawa, and I spent a lot of time here in Kingston. I was in the armed forces just up the hill here for two or three years as well. <coughs> so, uh, and we have a cottage uh, on Christie Lake, which is not too far from here. <coughs> for any of you who are in the know, just that's not close to Westport. So it's a real pleasure to be home, and while it said that I'm just here for the day. I'm going to cheat a little. I'm going to stay a little longer, and I'm going to spend some time uh, with visiting relatives. So thanks so much for the invitation. It really is nice to be back. Now, since I left Queens uh, and uh, went into the field of business and marketing and uh, things like that, I got in introduced into the, the field of tourism when I was in Quebec City. And uh, so I, Quebec City was a place that really is, is in tourism. But when I moved out to Calgary, I found a different environment. Uh, it's not exactly, uh, while well, Banff is a major tourism icon for the country, the, uh, the town of Calgary is not at heart really a tourism city except for the business side of tourism. But because when I first moved out to Alberta a number of years ago, quite a few years ago now, uh, I did a study for the province of Alberta on developing tourism and I went around and interviewed a number of potential investors and I was very keen on tourism and I said, well, why, why don't you invest in tourism? It's really a burgeoning field and in the future it's going to grow, which it did. But the gentleman across the table looked at me and said, are you crazy? Why should I go into tourism? I can dig a hole in the ground and get rich. If I go into tourism, I have to really work hard. <laughs> So he was in the oil business, obviously. And so I have learned that while I am de very committed to tourism myself, uh, there are other people who are maybe not. But when I come back here and I saw that this is comfort country, I said, wow, I'm going to have to find a little bit more about what do you really mean by that. So perhaps we can talk about that when we talk about destination branding, if that's the brand you have adopted. So now the talk that I will give, uh, I think I probably have more material than, than time will allow, so perhaps the, the first part of the uh, presentation that I've prepared, I'll go over a little more quickly than uh, perhaps I had intended, and uh, we'll see how time goes. And then I have the, what I would like to spend more time on, a model of destination competitiveness that we developed after a very lengthy research uh, project where we identified the factors that uh, determine the success and competitiveness of a tourism destination. So I would like to go over that with you in detail and then see how it might apply to this part of Eastern Ontario from a tourism perspective. So let's move on. I had hoped we might have a laser pointer here, but we don't have one yet, so perhaps one will come on. If not, I'll just try and uh, point with my finger. <laughs> so let's... This one. So then we'll look at the factors to consider in trying to develop a strategy for the rural communities here, here in Eastern Ontario. I gather that's the focus of your discussions here today. So before proceeding, then let me express my sincere appreciation to Dr. Yolan Chan, who's the director of the Monison Centre, and Jeff Dixon, the project coordinator for this Monison Centre and this uh, conference here today. 
They have been very kind to me in uh, helping me prepare for this uh, presentation. And it really is an honor to speak to you and to say particularly when it's coming back home. Now, I teach course to my fourth year students on tourism policy, sort of trying to set the directions for a tourism destination in order that it can compete successfully in the national, international uh, tourism field. Now, if you look at what tourism policy is all about, there are really two major dimensions that I would like to focus on. First, on the left-hand side, you'll see what I have identified as the dimensions of destination success. That is, the factors that determine how successful a tourism uh, destination can be. And down on the left-hand side, there are a number of factors. These are the factors which I will discuss in greater detail when I go into my model in uh, the latter part of this presentation. So I'll just skip over that, but just focus on, there's two main parts to tourism policy. First, what are the, the, the factors of the destination itself that make it successful, and secondly, how do you make the visitor happy? What are the core dimensions of experience memorability? In other words, how do we make the tourism experience at a destination truly memorable? That is the ultimate goal that you have as a tourism destination manager. When people leave your destination, they take away with them something that is, remains with them hopefully for life, truly memorable destination experience. So that's the second part of my research where I look at the tourist and what makes the experience memorable. And we have a number of uh, uh, research projects going on in this area as well. So the destination competitiveness on one hand, how do you manage the destination? But in doing that, how do you provide memorable tourism experience? These are the two key dimensions of tourism policy. Now let's look at some general observations, if you will, on the future of Eastern Ontario as a competitive tourism destination, which is, I understand, the the focus of this session here today in the broader sense. And sustainability is the other part of being successful. There's no use being successful if you can't do it on a long-term sustainable basis. To pretend otherwise is very illusionary. So although I would say that Eastern Ontario is well known as a major economic power, it's perhaps less well known as a tourism destination, except for that city down the street called Ottawa, which does have a fairly strong tourism uh, rep uh, image. But for the, this part of Eastern Ontario in general, I think while well, it's a very pleasant place to visit, uh, to visit and maybe the, the comfort destination, it may not be the kind of destination that people will travel around the world to see. So Eastern Ontario should perhaps reflect upon the competitiveness of its current and and look at a more well-defined brand. Uh, as I said, I would ask to whom is comfort country intended to appeal? Is it primarily for the local uh, tourism market or is it for the, the longer distance tourism market? Who are you uh, trying to appeal to with this very interesting uh, branding approach? <clears throat> so what other destinations is comfort country competing with? When we talk about competitiveness, we really have to look at who are the other destinations who are trying to appeal to the same kind of visitors that you are with this branding approach? And what kind of experiences does the comfort country brand promise to the potential visitor? And that's what a brand really is. It's, a, it's an informal promise to potential visitors as to the kind of experience that they can expect to have when they visit your destination. So when we say comfort country, what kind of experiences are you trying to convey to the potential visitor? Now the region is certainly more than a rural agricultural area, so in your view, outside of Ottawa, as I've said, what would attract visitors to come here from around the world? And you, you may have things that are very, very attractive, but you have to let them know about them and make them aware of them. So the formal title end of my presentation is the competitive destination, a sustainable tourism perspective. So being competitive and then doing it on a sustainable basis. So those wishing to further examine the contents of my presentation are referred to a book uh, by the same title by myself